Hello there. My name is Dr. Salim Javed. I am an associate professor at the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication at Lingyas Lalita Devi Institute of Management and Sciences. As you know that we have been producing a series called Understanding Cinema where we have explained and tried to understand about how the cinema as a whole in Indian context has progressed throughout the decade and over a century and now till 2000 uh 23 we have also seen how what were the sociological and uh, what were the sociological and political developments which help you know uh, cinema grow in the shape as it is today uh for last few videos we have been talking about what it takes to make good films what it takes to make good cinema so in that in this connection we have so far talked about how story plot and now screenplay plays an important role in coming videos we will be talking about production design color cinematography editing sound design music and how these components come together to you know form a unforgettable you know visual f- uh, narration which otherwise also known as cinema what i mean as a whole as a as a hindi film industry or as a indian film industry now we have st- started finding our feet in international mark- market also and it is not for the first time that it is happening it has been happening for a long time but the way we have received a uh, you know welcoming gesture this time that has been slightly rare in in the history of cinema now if you remember that when i was talking about uh, um, you know uh, globalization or corporatization there was one particular component which was lack lackluster lackluster stories or lackluster constant content so in this particular thing we are trying to understand what it takes to make a good story and to write a good story or or to convey visually a good story you know what are the elements which come together and make it happen like if you remember in, uh, so far we have talked about that when we when we talk about stories you know when we talk about that it's whether it's the film has a good story or not uh so i i said that a story is a succession of events that invigorates the climax and it initiates the immutable change now this is something very good in terms of words and in terms of con- uh, you know in terms of concept but what does it mean like if you remember that we have have said that before we started writing before we st- you know started formally speaking we were conveying our stories doesn't matter whether we knew how to speak or not whether it it, it does not matter whether we had tools or not uh, when we did not have words and tools we were making cave paintings or we were etching it on the cave wall through stones so a story is not dependent i mean because of these examples we can say that a story is not dependent on some medium or uh, it is not necessary condition that a story need to be set through a medium story has got its own way to be conveyed i mean there is a beautiful line which which talks about story that they that that they flow like wind then migrate like birds so a story doesn't matter which geography specific story that is but the nature of story itself is such that it transcends boundaries you know uh, uh, a story which is rooted in 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 greek mythology may find its feet in india so there is no you know geography attached to a story there are in some cases like i always say that to make um, uh, dangal you have to you know situate that story in india but if you take the same story to new york maybe that is converted into million dollar baby so though it's more or less the story is same but as far as the geography is concerned at uh, the moment you you give a geography to a story treatment changes i'll be talking about these things the what does treatment means what does you know how how do you put a geography in a story and things like that so as far as the story is concerned you know they flow like wind and migrate like they they migrate like birds so a story is a succession of events that invigorates the climax i'll be talking when i'll be explaining i'll be explaining how it invigorates the climax and you know it 
initiates the immutable change. Now, when we were talking about, you know, there is a story, the, the story can be one liner, story can be one paragraph, story can be one, one and a half page. And the moment you exceed beyond it, either it becomes a treatment or it's called screenplay. I'll be talking about screenplay today only. Now, you know, um, sometime I, as I talk to students, they say that, sir, story-wise it is working, but when we have started mold, you know, when we have started developing the story into screenplay, uh, you know, it's not working. So one of the reasons, I mean, this is slightly a trade secret, that one of the reasons that the missing link between a story and a screenplay is treatment. Now, very when you you know when you register yourself in screen uh, writing workshops, uh, there are many you know. So uh, you know this link. Uh, I have been like many of my students have been um, you know those who who moved to Bombay. They they have been uh, now attending a lot of screenplay workshops because they they developed this you know st you know flair for writing. So they always say uh, they always call back and say, sir. It's absolutely fine that they talk about, uh, you know, how you can, you know, develop a good story. What are the uh, con what what are the components of screenplay writing? What is called what? I'll be explaining that in the session, or maybe next. But they never talk about treatment. Now, treatment is something, you know. I I always say there was a treatment uh, th that I wrote as part of an exercise with students. Like suppose if story is one and a half page and screenplay technically two hours screenplay is 120 pages depending this 120 pages depend whether you are writing an action film or you are writing a dialogue based film. So if you are writing an action based film so maybe two, three, four lines uh, you know when they translate on screen maybe they, they cover two, three, four, five minutes also. Now something like this like suppose it says then the car of character A start chasing the car of character B. Now, on paper, it is hardly a half line, but it can be an entire sequence also. Now, it that's why when you are writing a um, action-based film, number of pages will be below 120, and when you are writing a dialogue-based film for two hours, this is a two hours format. When you are writing a a, a two-hour film, uh, approximate pages will be 120, 100, and, you know, around 120. Like it can be five lower or five higher. Now, so one of the reasons that when you you know try to convert your your writing from only one and a half page story to 120 pages story. Look, there is a huge gap between half page, one and a half page, and 120 pages. So it's you know, logically there has to be something in in between. So unless you do not, you know, most of the uh, in, you know new writers they struggle with this concept when it comes to story and translating those story into screenplay they always struggle with that, that how how this one and a half page can be converted into 20 pages the answer is treatment now when you write a logical treatment of 100 uh, you know one and a half page a logical treatment reaches up to 40 to uh, you know 35 to 50 pages depending how well you write now now, this is really important for for not only the students of cinema, but also for the students of mass communication, that writing, though people don't pay, nowadays don't pay much attention to writing, but writing is such an important factor in terms of mass communication that if you are not a pro in writing, you know, then chances are that you'll be facing a lot of problems at your workplace. Now, this this is for this is like so far about story that which is like uh, uh, which accommodates immutable change from beginning till end. Uh, I'll be explaining this also. Then, uh, other than story, we also talked about plot. Now, what is a plot? If you remember, I I said one very <laughs> interesting example that um, um, there is a king, you know, and there is a queen. Uh, queen king died and queen died it's called a story but when it comes to plot there was a king and king died and the queen died out of grief you know that gives it a plot and every story is bound to have a good plot so the story's plot is the sequence of its events you know how events are unfolding um, 
in the story it can be you know linear story it can be non linear story story that depends on the style that you write it is a sequence of things that takes place in a narrative you know plot is a series of event as i said that takes place within a story it is a series of events you know happening one after another and giving a sense of a complete story now what is a complete story suppose if you know uh, just as a beginner or you know as to understand story is like anything where a lot of events are arranged and you see a logical progression in those events and then you see a logical culmination of those events and where you feel you know a feeling of catharsis or 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 a feeling of like ah this yes and you make a sense of that it is a complete event you know that complete event will have lot of um, you know micro events within it like uh, i have been uh, you know i was reading one wonderful book and i'll be talking about it uh, that when it when we talk about three act structure which is like uh, beginning middle and end uh, you know you will say that it's a three act structure which has got like beginning the first stage middle the second um, uh, stage and end the third stage but there are many writers and uh, uh, successful film writers also those who have been treating this three act structure as a nine act structure like uh, i'll i'll be talking about it so you will be seeing uh, like a lot of you will be thinking that we have just come to know about three act structure and sir is talking about nine act structure so we'll you know we'll gradually move from three act structure uh, to you know uh, act, uh, nine act structure or hero's journey a wonderful book uh, called hero with a thousand faces and you know so now let's understand like plot plot is like as as i said that the plot is a series of events that play, takes place in a story and it's a series of events you know happening within the story now linear outline when you when you talk about the linear outline in terms of uh, plot not all stories begin at one point in time and continue forward through time to a conclusion at a later date to understand the basics of plot one need to have a clear idea about linear pro- plot outline a linear plot outline consists of these many things in which you have first thing is called exposition now what is exposition means like if you see literal translation of it you will you know you will get a sense of it but it basically talks about uh, you know it it provides the background information with one must be aware in order to understand or receive full information or benefit from the story now if i i'm sure most of you have seen bahubali and the way it starts part 1 there is a lady who is coming out of a, a cave she is carrying a baby then sh- suddenly she notices that she is being followed and then she somehow maneuver her ways and kills them all but gets wounded and then she tries to cross the river and there is where she lifts the baby and the ba- baby is there up in the air and the river is flowing uh, you know just like anything now the moment you see it it's it's called hook also technically it's called hook also the moment you see this you wonder that what is happening i mean from where this lady has come from dressing and everything and uh, the way she you know she she uses her sword so the the technical skill the costume the posture the the way she carries so you understand that she is a lady of importance but you know you are not able to fully receive the information which can you know talk about that from where, who she is from where she is coming and why she is doing the way she is and this is not being explained throughout the film also and this is explained in the next part part 2 only now so this this provides you know when we talk about exposition which is basically a, a linear order it 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 provides you know the background information that you and i must be aware in order to receive full information or you know uh, benefit of the story next part in the list is uh, you know initial um, incident now the initial incident is the incident that first begins the conflict now 
Now, this is something which is very interesting. Like, suppose when you see a film, it's 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 always that there is a world which is being established first, and then you introduce uh, when you establish all the characters, when you establish locale, when you establish you know the way of life of that particular place. Then you introduce slowly. You introduce a conflict. You know, sometimes you know uh, in this is in the linear manner. Like there are times when you can you know start with hook or when you can start uh, directly from uh, in a non-linear fashion. You can directly start from a climax also. That depends. You know. at at many places they always say that your story should be a, a balanced mixture of linear and non linear in in a way so when you talk about initial incident you are basically talking about you know the the bone of contention you know how how the the central conflict of the story is being established now then you when we talk about rising action the series of events and crises that leads up to the climax now rising action means like suppose i i, I this, this this is something very interesting like uh, suppose when you start you know uh, from ground floor when you go to first floor you always take stairs so you you are gradually you know ascending you know uh, and you taking one step at a time and then you are from point a then you are reaching point b in in the same way when you're talking about rising action it is always about you know how the moment like as i said that you begin the conflict or you introduce the con- conflict and then from how from that conflict action is being raised gradually and then you reach to the climax and uh, this is what it is now there is when there is a conflict there is a crisis an individual event within the rising action that creates tension and pushes the conflict towards a resolution at the climax now resolution is something like i many of us even for me also initially i knew that every story has a climax but i later on came to know that beyond climax there is something called resolution where you know you tie up the loose ends of the entire story you know it's it, it is climax will be that you are overcoming the problem that was set up in, within the film but resolution is always that within the story when you are solving and when you are reaching and you are culminating towards the climax there are always some you know at at some point or the other always in plot not in plot but at least in subplot you there are some points which are slightly unsolved and when you reach from climax when you reach beyond the point of climax you always get towards a resolution where close the uh, you know um, ends are tied up now climax uh, as i'm saying climax and climax so it, it it is basically the highest point of interest at at which audience learn the outcome of the conflict now that is what i said that when you initially introduce the conflict and then when you then i gave the example of how you you know go on stairs so you gradually move up and there is a rising action so that rising action is basically when from point a you are able to reach point b there you know so you are able to reach climax also through it was initiated with the you know conflict and then you are able to reach the climax so this is what the you know, and climax is like where you actually solve you know the major debate about the film that's why it is the highest point of interest then you have a denouncement it is a wrapping up of the loose ends as i said the uh, the unanswered questions about characters live and subplot i said plot not primarily in plot but in subplot in the story may be answered here so you know you you must have seen a lot of films like to make it to explain it in simple terms you must have seen that uh, that by the time you know towards the end of the story when hero is uh, he, when hero settles his or her account with the um, um, antagonist you know after that you have slightly light moment where you are you know uh, cheering up and you know you are solving all all the things uh, i mean this particular thing is like earlier if you remember that as soon as the uh, uh, antagonist or the villain dies of the film you know cut the end no but now you see that there are like two three not if not two three scenes there are at least you know one to two scenes where they are tying up the loose end now 
So, this is uh, so far we have uh, like um, uh, plot uh, linear plot and then you have non-linear plot also where we will be discussing other things also. Now, uh, you know when we are talking about story, when we are talking about you know um, plot or we are talking about screenplay or we are talking about turning points, if you remember I gave an example of Gladiator which was released in the year 2000 uh, and that is where we discussed about turning points, pinch point, you know, uh, turning point 1, turning point 2, turning point 3 and how these things, all these things, you know, what we are talking about are basically fall in the broader domain of drama, uh, you, you know, and, and, and the moment you say drama, you know, there is something beyond what is not we usually experience in our mundane life. Now, suppose you have a friend and, you know, something good or bad is happening and, you know, you are trying to console him or her and you say, you know, you say something. So, knowing your character, your friend says, yeah, drama mat karo, you know. So, so, so drama is something which is not in the mundane life. This is something you know, out of the mundane, like I, you, you must be wondering when you see a lot of South Indian films, right now they are being praised really high, uh, you know, when a hero kicks a, a sidekick, they are very lightweight, they bounce in air, or hero is too powerful to, you know, beat them like you are uh, washing a piece of cloth and things like that and, you know, there is a punch, he is in air, uh, he is walking, then he reaches to a point, then he punched the villain and things like that. So, a lot of things are there. Now, I, l there are a lot of people, you know, who, 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 who amusingly say that uh, South Indian people are very either, either very light or they are very powerful light in a sense that they fly in air quite a lot, they are very bouncy also. Uh, and, and powerful in a way that they can actually handle 10 people. It is not about only South Indian film. Like you see that a lot of in Hindi films and English film also. Like these are the people who are, you know, typically trained, but when as hero is uh, or the protagonist is approaching, no bullet is going, you know, hitting the, you know, hero. Now, you understand, look, in normal life, if God forbid, there is a scene where a lot of, a firing is happening, one or two may hit the person, but in cinema it will not. Why? Because it's drama. Okay. So, that's why dramatic conflict will be, you know, slightly different. Though it will have its root in normal life, it's not that it will not have its root in normal life, but it will have slightly, you know, what do you call that? Slightly one or two notch up, you know. Now, so, the nature of drama and dra dramatic, um, you know, conflict, it, it says that conflict arises from the difficulties that protagonists encounter when they are trying to achieve his or her or its goal. Now, you must be, his or her, you understand. Now, what is its goal, you know, it. Now, you used to see a lot of animation film like Wall-E, uh, the uh, 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 robot which is being condemned is the central character. Uh, you know, so it's like when the protagonist, so protagonist can be he, she and it. So, protagonist, you know, uh, encounters when he, she or it's trying to achieve his, her or its goal, you know. And situation is not favorable. Protagonist is encountering, you know, problems. You know, that is where dramatic conflict arise. Now, it is essential and there is a need to understand and use the conflict as a source of dramatic energy and the motivation is how, you know, uh, dramatic energy and the motivation is how and why we are doing it. Now, now this is very interesting, you know, when you say it, conflict, without conflict, like, um, I mean, please understand, without conflict, there is no drama, you know. If you are saying that don't be so dramatic about it, you know, or, or, or you say, you know, it's, it's purely drama. So, without conflict, there is no drama anywhere in the world. So, if there is a drama, it means there is a conflict. Now, you know, conflict 
can be a dramatic energy also which is which is driving the entire narration which is driving the entire incident you know uh, so so when we say conflict conflict is you know conflict you know the way you and i understand about conflict yes that conflict we are talking about but there are very different kind of conflicts also uh, and we will be discussing about just after uh, after as i finish talking so we'll be talking about different kind of conflicts also now so when we talk about conflict you know the balancing factor of this conflict is motivation if conflict is a you know source of dramatic energy then then this uh, motivation is the path of the protagonist which he she or it will follow we'll discuss about it thank you very much